L, the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the only way to be saved, by faith alone, period. God desires to have relationship with us, yet he is perfect, righteous, and holy. As one who is righteous, he cannot tolerate the presence of wickedness. So he separates himself from us because we're not. God is perfect and he desires us to be perfect. Yet, none of us is. We are all sinners who have fallen short of the glory of God. There's no way for us to do good deeds, meditate, or do anything else to build a bridge capable of crossing this infinite chasm. Jesus is the only way. That sounds exclusive. It is, but it's still true. It's only offensive to people who think that they are already good, or they have an idolatrous quote-unquote God that is not that good. So it's really not too hard to meet its standards. It's all about how we view God. If God is very, very, very good, in fact, absolutely, totally perfect, then you need Jesus, period. Every false religion has a common denominator. They all teach, you can get to God by doing X, Y, Z, because God isn't really much better than you. Matthew 5.20, Jesus speaking. For I tell you that unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to the ancients, Do not murder, and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with his brother will be subject to judgment. Verse 27. You have heard that it was said, Do not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman to lust after her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Verse 38. You have heard that it was said, Eye for eye and tooth for tooth. But I tell you not to resist an evil person. If someone slaps you on your right cheek, turn to him the other also. Verse 48. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Can any humble human being actually reading those words of Jesus and not see their need for him? None of us can claim perfection. None of us can stand before God and think that we actually deserve to be there. God's standards are higher than ours. And that would be absolutely terrifying if the story ended there. But it doesn't. We aren't judged on our own merit. We're judged by the merit of Jesus. And thank God for that. Plus, aren't you happy that your God is morally perfect? Would you want any less than that? Our confidence must not be in us or in anything we can do, but in Jesus alone. Nothing we do can accomplish making us perfect. Not belonging in the denomination or individual church we belong to. Not the quote-unquote anointing of the pastors or prophets that speak into our lives. Not confession to a priest, fasting, sacraments, or any other religious rituals. Not prayers to Mary or saints, or even prayers to God. No, it is our individual faith in Christ alone and in the gospel. It is believing in him and trusting in him alone. And that is such a beautiful thing. God forgives us despite all of our flaws, grants us life by merely trusting in Jesus, and then empowers us to become the best possible version of ourselves. John 3.16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Verse 36. He who believes in the Son has eternal life, but he who does not obey the Son will not see life, 
but the wrath of God abides on him. John 14, 6. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Acts 4.12 Salvation exists in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. Salvation is by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, to the glory of God alone. Let me unpack that a little bit more. Salvation, which is being saved from God's wrath in his right judgment of our sinfulness, is available only because of God's grace alone. Grace is unmerited or undeserved favor. Grace is the act of giving mercy to those who don't deserve mercy. God doesn't owe us his favor or his mercy. We're guilty. We've broken the law. We deserve judgment. He would be perfectly just to condemn us. But he's loving and merciful, so he offers to us this free gift. What is the gift? Christ, who is our means of salvation. How do we receive this free gift? Through faith alone. By personally trusting in him. By giving our lives to him as our Lord and Savior. And this has been offered to us for the glory of God alone. God is glorified in that he has graciously provided us a way to be redeemed. Lest we err by adding even a single deed to this, and think that our cooperation, or good works, or deeds, or efforts, or rituals, help in any way. Good works may be the evidence of our salvation, but in no way do they contribute to our salvation. For us to take any credit at all is to defame God's grace. We're drowning in sin, so God throws us Jesus like a life preserver to grab onto. As he is pulling us to the boat, we give a small tug of practically insignificant help here and there towards the boat. Imagine us trying to take credit for helping to save ourselves because of those little tugs. Shameful. We should give our tugs of help. It shows that we really want to be saved. Our tugs and effort do count. They are good, but they're almost nothing when compared to perfection. They show that we appreciate what God is doing for us. They confirm we want to go in the same direction. But if we think we're actually helping to save ourselves, we're delirious and arrogant and probably still drowning. And the boat there to rescue us is just a mirage in our mind as a result of the loss of oxygen from drowning. Ephesians 2.4 But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in our trespasses. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms, in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might display the surpassing riches of his grace, demonstrated by his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith, and this not from yourselves, It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance as our way of life. So good works are good. We're created in Christ to do them. It's what God saved us for, 
prepared in advance to do as our way of life. But they're not what saves us at all. What about repentance? Doesn't repentance count as a quote-unquote work since it's something we have to do to be saved? What about faith? We have to believe in Jesus still. Does that count as a quote-unquote work? No. Neither of these are works. Neither of these are good deeds, loving acts, or religious rituals. They are both spiritual responses to God's grace. Remember the parable of the prodigal son in Luke 15? Our ability to repent of our sin and trust in what Jesus accomplished on the cross on our behalf doesn't earn us salvation any more than the prodigal son's return and groveling to his father earned his forgiveness. See Luke 15, verses 17 through 24. No, the forgiveness and acceptance of the father, as well as his provision of sonship and restoration back into the family, was all a generous gift from the father because of his own grace and mercy. The father would have been justified to reject his wicked son. His extension of mercy is the grace that is like God's grace towards us in Christ. Humility and repentance are necessary, but they're not works. They're the other side of the faith coin. Anyone who claims that repentance of sin is not necessary is telling you a demonic lie. This is like trying to continue to be financially supported by their father, while also continuing to reject him personally and relationally and staying in their pig pan of filth. No, our repentance is the catalyst that drives us back to God to seek his forgiveness and restoration. Faith is not a quote-unquote work either. This is proved by the fact that, quote, faith by itself, if it is not complemented by action, is dead, end quote. James 2.17 The mere fact that genuine, saving, living faith must always be accompanied by works speaks to the fact that the faith cannot itself be a work. Genuine faith is always accompanied by action that demonstrates that the faith is real. James tells us of the foolishness of putting faith in good works alone, as well as faith alone without works. He says, quote, Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. End quote. James 2.18 Faith is the act of the will to accept the means that God has provided to be restored to him. Our faith is our trust in God, and our actions complement our faith and attest to it. Let's return to our previous analogy of drowning. Is it a, quote, work of my own merit to come to the realization that I'm drowning? Of course not. Is it a work of my own merit to want to be saved from drowning? Of course not. Is it a work of my own merit to grab the life preserver that God has thrown out to me in Jesus Christ? Of course not. Is it a work of my own merit to hang on to the life preserver as it is being pulled slowly towards the boat? Of course not. I'm not earning anything at all. The whole entire process is a gift from start to finish. Is it any surprise that we should sing praises of God and live a transformed life now as we're being pulled towards the boat? No way. Joy is the natural fruit of a person 
that is being saved. 